Hey everybody, October 30th, 2020. Uh, this video is way overdue. I should have done this about a month ago. So I'm sorry for anybody who's been following along. Just life is busy right now. So I um, figured I'd give you an update and a few tips with Oratex and the Kit Fox wing and laker edge. So for starters, uh, the tail is on, or sorry, the rudder is on and rigged. Horizontal and elevator are on and rigged. Tail wheel with chains and everything are all set. Just need to do this panel here. Uh, I don't think I've made any progress anywhere else. Been busy with the wings. Uh, I got some different tires. They're used and junk, but they're bigger and they're free. So I put them on. So as far as Vortex and the Kit Fox wing specifically with the Laker Edge, I will show you how I did it. As you can see, I have a mega sweet rotisserie with a screwdriver. And it works great. Okay, let's tilt this up a little bit. So I did the bottom first and I didn't want an unsightly line that would go all the way through because Ortex shows everything. So what I did is I brought the covering and I made the line where the Laker edge, uh, where I would terminate the fabric. So I glued the fabric all the way up to here. So this entire thing on the bot or the initial blanket is glued all the way to, I want to say right about here. And then obviously the back is glued and wrapped around to here. So I'll show you the bottom first. So like I said, it was glued all the way from the top of the Laker Edge, and I think I glued it to about right here. And then each false rib was glued, but I only glued it to where the fabric would be touching it. I didn't glue it to where they, they pull away. Otherwise you get these divots and it doesn't look right. And then obviously the ribs, glued all the ribs. Um, one thing to note with Oratex, is it's the heat, it takes a lot more heat um, to shrink it and to get the glue started. And so if you're dealing with a Laker leading edge, you know it's, here, I'll show you over here, it's very thin. There's not much to it and heat can easily warp this. So the way I decided to combat that on the top layer, I had already noticed that Glue in this first layer, the Laker edge was already starting to warp a little bit and it was starting to scare me a little bit. And I had noticed on some of the other STI wings with Ortex that you would see kind of like a, it'd be wavy. And I decided that I didn't want to have the waviness. So I was gonna rely on the Ortex to put even pressure in between each one of the ribs and false ribs. And as you can see, it turned out pretty freaking good. Um, I understand that I somewhat, you know, maybe a little bit defeated the purpose of the Laker edge, but overall where the VGs will be, um, it's, it's pretty, uh, you know, it's pretty straight and there's no waviness. So the way I did the top is you can see this is the second blanket. So I start, I glued from this line, which is coincidentally and uh, not coincidentally on purpose, um, where the lake, where the Laker edge ends as well. So the other line is in line with the Laker edge. So there's no, there's no termination lines in the fabric in the leading edge. So it makes it super clean. So I glued from there to about 
right about here. And I tacked it all down uh, with light heat just to activate the glue. And then went and did the back with the traditional way of the overlap. As you can see, you can see the line right there. So at this one, I would glue all the way to here. So you've got plenty of anchor point there. And I decided I didn't, well, let me rephrase this. If you have a hard surface and you put glue on it, and then you put the Oratex, as soon as you activate that glue, it doesn't allow the Oratex to shrink. So that's why people were getting waviness in their Laker edges, because they were putting the Oratex on and with, with light heat just to activate, to not warp the Laker edge, and then you were at the mercy of however you had put the Laker edge on. So if you didn't get it exactly perfect, and I, I don't even think you can, it's, there's little waves. I mean, you can kind of see it. Let me zoom in. Essentially, you can see just a little bit of waviness. And if you put the Oratex on and you glue the whole thing, you lose the ability to shrink and to tighten this stuff up. So, back to here, what I did, as I said, I glued to here, and then I put a thin layer up here, did my initial shrink, and tightened everything down, and allowed the shrinking of the fabric back here to pull and put tension in between each false rib. And that also allowed me to shrink here. So I would shrink, I shrank from here to here to get this all nice and tight. And then I shrank all this. And once I got all the fabric nice and tight, I finally went back through and tightened this, or sorry, heated this up to lock everything in place. And you can do that because Ortex is, it's a local heat. It's not like super flight where you put an iron on it and it's shrinking out here. You put an iron on this, it's shrinking right where the iron is. So it's really easy to get pretty uh, pinpoint with it. So, sorry, I'm sniffing. I'm just outside, it's 20 degrees. Where was I? Okay, next. I mean, you can see it turned out great. A little bit of a, I mean, if someone didn't know what the purpose of the Laker Edge was, they, they paid attention and you can see how, just how straight it is. So, I like it, I'm happy with it. I'm gonna do the other wing like it. Figured I'd just show you guys how I did it and maybe you'll decide to do the same thing. Um, next thing, over here. So in the manual, I turned this off. In the manual, it tells you to drill your holes and pre-position these um, end caps. And then you go and you cover it and then you put these on and then you put your finishing tape over them. Well, the problem with Ortex people you're gonna have is Ortex is really thick, especially with the glue. So I initially tried, I had Ortex all the way out to here. I was gonna wrap it around, pretend, pretend this isn't here. I was gonna wrap Ortex around like a traditional system and anchor it underneath. Well, between the glue and the Ortex, it, it's really difficult, if not impossible, to get it to lay down flat. So you go and you try and put this piece on, and now you're dealing with the space of the Oratex and the glue on the bottom side, and your holes don't line up. And so I didn't want to rely on the glue. This is before I really had a solid understanding of just how insane Oratex glue is. Uh, I did what I saw other users doing. Well, before I get any further, you can see just how thick this stuff is. Anyways, I just terminated it. I glued it, 
and I rolled the edge and made sure that it was kind of around the corner and then I just took a razor blade and cut it off. And then I went back with the glue and sealed anywhere, anywhere underneath the edge or the lip there, just to really make sure that it's locked in. Same, same with the other side. So you can see where I terminated it. And this is just chalk from snapping my rib stitching. But this will be painted red, and then this will be black. Black pretty much where the, everywhere except where the fuel placard level is. Um, I haven't, I haven't uh, poked the holes yet for the hinges. Let me grab my light. Totally unprepared for this, but I'd already done my flapper ons. As you can see where the holes are. I was considering just covering in the Ortex and going back and drilling the holes later. And it doesn't really matter. As long as you have a sharp drill bit and you don't go wandering off into the space here and poking holes in your fabric. Um, Ortex is as far as drilling through it. When I was drilling to rivet these, um, it doesn't, I don't know how to explain it. It's like trying to drill through clothing or I don't know. You drill and the drill bit will obviously tear a hole in the Ortex, but then it kind of piles up. So you have to go back in with a soldering iron like, like this, and you got to cauterize all those holes and kind of burn them down a little bit. So that's what I'm gonna end up doing with this. But I'm gonna go in first and poke all the holes with the soldering iron and then cauterize them and then um, mount my hinges. Now, some of you are probably wondering why I rib stitched this with Oratex. Reason I did that is because it's very cold up here and you notice the cap strips are glued with high saw. And one thing to note in really cold climates is certain glues and certain metals start to lose their uh, effectiveness and rigidity, sometimes upwards of 50%. And so I didn't want to be flying at negative 30 and, you know, hit some turbulence and have a cap strip crack because it was so cold. Because I mean, you gotta think, you fly at negative 30 plus the airspeed of 100 miles an hour, you know, everything's gonna get super cold in here. So I want a little bit of insurance. And so I rib stitch it. You can look in there. Now Ortex recommends that you use, where is it? This stuff. This is non-waxed round lace. I used standard wax lacing. They say not to use wax lacing because when you go and you put heat to it, the wax will melt and it'll mess with, it'll start seeping into the adhesive. So what I did, took the length of lacing that I needed and I would sandwich it, pretend this is a razor blade. I would pull it all through and sandwich it through and pull all the wax off of it. And you'd, you'd have a big ball of wax. I do that for both sides. And then I would run it through a, a rag of isopropyl alcohol, or sorry, denatured alcohol. And that pretty much took care of all the wax. I wanted just enough wax on there so when I'm doing my beach uh, staggering knots and I'm pulling them down, each one, I want enough wax to where the knot would still slip and disappear. Because I tried it with this and it would just roll up and then bite halfway here instead of pulling around and down. And afterwards, 
I, you put uh, two layers of glue. It's kind of to build up the transition because Ortex really sucks down in between and to encapsulate the wax. So I would glue, I glued pretty much within an eighth, eighth of an inch on either side all the way down so that when you went to put the tapes on, the glue will activate, encapsulate what little wax is left and then really make these tapes stick. And I didn't have any problems whatsoever. So a little tip for you, if you are on the fence about using wax lace, I had zero problems with it whatsoever. Uh, here, this is all gonna get, this is all sealed off with the glue on the end and then I'm gonna go ahead and paint on the inside here. Same with the same color, or same paint as over there. Wing tips. Uh, there's, it's kind of commonly known that the wing tips uh, don't fit quite right. They're a little bit too big and they end up, they usually end up riding like out here. So you've got some space to fill to make it sit nice and smooth and flat. So the remaining Laker cutoffs, this fiberglass, high sawing it to the inside. I'm gonna do two layers. Did this last night. Yeah, it's a little globby there. I kinda got a little bit overkill with high saw, but you get the point. And I'll put another layer. It actually stiffens it for one, and then I'll put, a, I'll put another layer here, and I think it'll be perfect. And then next is you have this foam in here, and it's really brittle. And so you got to dig that out about an eighth of an inch and fill this whole thing with high saw. So another YouTuber, Harlan, I really appreciate this. He used these with a drill. It's about the perfect depth. You just run it along the edge, cuts out everything you need, leaves the sides, and you can fill the high saw. So thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Uh, this wing is done. Let me show you the... So you've got their light. Got your lift strut brackets, jury strut brackets, and then your fuel drain over there. Sorry, not the drain, the fill fuel cap recessed drain. We'll call it that. That's over there. I'm unsure. I want to make sure I have enough tapes to for the rib lacing, and if I have enough, I might end up running. A line all the way down all the way down there and then one on the bottom all the way down too that's a lot of tape I didn't want to commit to that until I got all the rib stitching done because this stuff's not cheap so there's no wiring in this wing um, the wiring for the lights will be in the rear spar I'm not doing lights out on the struts I'm doing them on the gear this will have the standard pedo. I'm not doing a fancy pedo, it's just gonna be that little L piece of aluminum tubing. And the only wiring in it will be in the rear spar as well. Most likely the lights will be probably up here. I'll have a wig rag feature, and those is landing lights, and maybe I'll have a couple of light bars. I don't know, I haven't gotten that far yet. But that is my update as of October 30th. Hopefully this wing will be done next week and I can hang the Artex up for good. And I am, I'm over covering. I mean, it's easy, but I wanna get back to the nuts and bolts and wiring because that's what I like doing. So, hope everybody has a good Halloween and Hopefully you'll hear from me by around Thanksgiving with updates. Hopefully, well, that'll be done. Hopefully you'll see an engine hanging on there. And I'm in between 
two engines right now. So, stay tuned on that. Other than that, appreciate it. Everybody take care. Stay away from the Rona. See you guys.